Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Tina Jha. On the show today, we will talk about the Suez Canal crisis that has put global trade in peril. A giant container ship has been stuck in Egypt's Suez Canal for nearly a week now, blocking way for the other ships to pass. A Panama flagged ship, the Ever Given, that carries cargo between Asia and Europe, ran aground on Tuesday in the narrow canal that runs between Africa and the Sinai Peninsula. Authorities have been making all possible attempts to free the vessel and reopen the waterway, which is very crucial for global shipping. According to news reports, the blockage of the canal has resulted in a massive maritime traffic jam, causing delays in global shipment chain. According to official figures, some 19,000 vessels passed through the canal last year. India has chalked out a four-point plan to deal with the situation arising from the blockage of the Suez Canal, which include advising the ships to reroute via the Cape of Good Hope. Now, this plan was chalked out in a meeting convened by the Logistics Division, the Department of Commerce, on Friday. And what all does this plan include? How significant is the Suez Canal for global shipping? And what would be the implications if this blockage continues further? These are some of the aspects that we will try and discuss on this edition of The Big Picture. Joining me are two distinguished panelists. Let me introduce them to you. I'm joined on the show today by Dr. Vishwapati Trivedi, his former Secretary, Ministry of Shipping, Government of India, and Mr. Rakesh Singh, Secretary, ICC Shipping Association. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on the program today. Dr. Trivedi, so before we uh, begin to talk about the impact of this blockage on India and the four-point plan that's been chalked out by the government, let's first understand the importance of Suez Canal for international trade. You know, Suez Canal uh, uh, has been in operation for almost 100 years plus. And uh, it's a very uh, critical uh, nerve which joins the, uh, uh, the, uh, with the Mediterranean and then with Europe. With uh, this, uh, there are several other such channels in the world and uh, they are all critical. But this one uh, has its... Uh, higher importance in terms of the opportunity cost. You know, if 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 the Swiss Canal is blocked, the diversion is is a very long, which makes uh, it, uh, it it much more important. And there is a Straits of Malacca and the Panama Canal and others, which uh, one don't have so much traffic. And number two, they have uh, the diversion routes, which are not that long, uh, which uh, uh, happen if Suez Canal was uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, that said, uh, mm, the impact would be very uh, high. Uh, they're talking in terms of something like, uh, uh, you know, uh, tens of billions of dollars of worth of trade would be stuck. And... Uh, that too, in, uh, when all these economies are picking up after the COVID and pandemic and the trade has just started to get going. Uh, well, uh, uh, there is a, uh, there is a, I mean, if we were to look at some positive side that the trade is yet not at its peak. Now, had it been the normal trade uh, pattern, the loss would have been much more. And uh, a bit of, uh, uh, carelessness, I don't know where to point the finger. Uh, what I have seen and read and heard and spoken to people about is, uh, is lies with, uh, uh, with a whole lot of uh, agencies. Uh, Mr. Rakesh Singh Ji would be, uh, be the best to uh, tell us uh, how much the pilot uh, plays a role in these things. Yes, let me, let, me, let me take that issue to, Dr., uh, to Mr. Singh. And in fact, you know, looking at the pictures, I've also been wondering over these days, is the canal, because we all know it's quite narrow, is it designed to handle such a huge vessel that has now been grounded? Because the ever given, when I was reading, I found out it is almost the length of the Empire State Building. Yes. Uh, in fact, to put the perspective on dimension, of the features of the, and the ship, uh, which has run aground inside the canal. This ship is 400 meters long 
and it is one and a half times longer than Titanic, the fam infamous Titanic that we all know about. That's the uh, length. The Swiss Canal width where the vessel has run aground and in general is about 200 meters. And the ships double the width of the canal. So there's no way that ship can turn around in a place there if it goes off the ground. And this is what has happened. Mm. I would, uh, before I go to the, uh, the problem causes vessel running around, because Suez Canal, by and large, it's been a very safe canal uh, in terms of uh, we have hardly heard of any accidents inside the canal. Uh, it's a very straightforward, straight passage. And after the doubling of the canal route since 2015, it became faster and even safer. But we'll come back to that. But I was just wanted to put the trade perspective on this whole thing. As you rightly said, about 15 to 60 ships transit this canal every day. And that makes it about ships which transit. And uh, as far as India is concerned, our trade to European Union and to United States and Latin American countries is close to $200 billion through Suez Canal. And uh, I was told last uh, that uh, as of today, goods worth $10 billion are stuck on the ships which are waiting for the transit. And uh, the repercussions are very fast. The markets are sensitive. Trivedi uh, said is right that we are not into 100 percent, you know, uh, business uh, per, uh, ratio as uh, normal before COVID. It would have been worse. But I understand that the petroleum product freight rates have been doubled already. The entire uh, fuel petroleum supply to Europe from Middle East is stopped. And the freight's going up. We have the fuel prices going up by four to five percent. This is immediate impact of this. And uh, then, so I've been told that uh, this is a very interesting, you know, there's a lacuna in the, the global system of shipping. Uh, there's, there's a Panama Canal, which is, in, you could call it equivalent to, uh, and then there are natural narrow waterways all over the world. There's a man-made canal in Panama Canal. Globally, when there is a pilot on board, pilot is a person who has a local knowledge about the water what developments have taken place, what obstructions may be there, where is the water, where the water is less, or mm -hmm. local well-trained pilot who has up-to-date information. A ship coming from different parts, maybe transit once or twice a canal or a waterway, and the captain, everybody else, has a basic knowledge, but he doesn't have the detailed knowledge as it is required to safely transit a canal, a waterway system like Swiss Canal. The, the law on this is that you have which Egyptian Swiss Canal controlled by Egypt. So Egyptian pilot was on board and is always on board. And uh, the, it, it, the law reads that the vessel is under the control of master, that is captain of the ship, on the advice of the pilot. Now that makes it very tricky. It makes, though everything is practically done by the pilot, in fact, it's better that it is done by the pilot. Panama Canal is the only waterway in the world where the written law is that once your vessel enters canal, Panama Canal, the pilot will be 100% in control of the vessel and in and responsible, whereas everywhere else it is vague, and that's what makes it very tricky. But fortunately, uh, when you say 19,000 ships transiting from God knows how many or so uh, after the war of <coughs> Arab uh, Israel war, uh, we have hardly had an accident of this. Of course, the size of ships was smaller. This is a ship which is has a capacity to carry 20,000 containers. Yes. For the point of view of the audience who are not very familiar with the ships, I could safely say, say a train which carries about 100 containers, this is 200 trains being carried on a ship. While it gives a tremendous advantages in the terms of freight, cross volume that moves, but then, you know, you have a problem like this. What is a very common feature in this part of the world, this is a weather feature, you have sudden outburst of sandstorms. You have sudden strong winds blowing across the Suez Canal. And if you look at the, you must have seen the picture of this ship. It's like a map with the containers loaded from forward to aft, 400 meter length, a 400 meter long wall, which going up to some 20, 30 meter high. So if a strong wind, sudden burst of storm or wind catches, <coughs> 
you know, need to be off course by half a degree. And uh, that kind of uh, leverage that wind creates on this kind of side, it becomes impossible to um, control. And this is something like this was has happened. Really difficult to say. Uh, margin for error is so small. I'm sure the lessons will be learned. Yes, That's massive a efforts have been underway effort. since Tuesday when this ship ran aground. But uh, to date, uh, it, it, nothing has been uh, successful as far, and that's why the immediate implications of this blockage are huge. So if we talk about India, both our panelists have said it has obviously affected supply chain, and for which India has now charted a four-point plan. So let me uh, take that question to Dr. Trivedi. Uh, so what's the four-point plan that's been chalked out? What all does it include, and how effective is it going to be? You know, it's an alternative strategy. Uh, that's uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, uh, whereas uh, all the, uh, the 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 following ships which are carrying cargo from uh, India, they're not necessarily all Indian ships. They uh, pick up uh, cargo from uh, Singapore, Sri Lanka, then uh, let's say Mumbai, Cochin, and then they move on. So uh, it's a mix of cargo, but yes. Uh, why India? Anybody else would have just followed the same thing. So, government of India is uh, uh, is doing what a standard thing could have been. Uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, I don't know uh, uh, whether this would. I think they would need uh, some big navy ships to tug it out. The the normal tugs in the uh, Suez Canal. Uh, tugging and pulling out uh, uh, a ship of this size uh, is is going to be a really difficult thing. I think this has the the attempt to clear the Suez Canal has to be an international attempt. We Absolutely. can't just leave it to the uh, Egyptian uh, or the Suez Canal authorities. Uh, what that would be, what is available, is uh, to be seen in future. But uh, there must be. The very, very difficult times. I'm sure they've also thought about international help uh, in uh, pulling the ship out. But uh, it could be just a long situation where before all this is done. Um, and uh, uh, the government uh, has done uh, good in taking immediate steps in diverting traffic. And uh, uh, that's all it could have done. I think at this point of time, there's nothing much which the government of India could have done besides this uh, strategy that they have for alternate uh, uh, routing of the ships. Certainly, that looks like an immediate step to uh, deal with the crisis. Uh, Mr. Singh, so shipping lines have been advised to now explore the option of rerouting of ships via the Cape of Good Hope. Now, how feasible is this option? Because such rerouting, of course, will take additional time, and especially if we talk about perishable cargo. Yeah, the rerouting of the ship via Cape of Good Hope is really no hope. It's uh, 5,000 kilometers of detour, about 15 days of voyage. So uh, really, I mean, there's no other option if uh, this channel remains blocked for, you know, God knows how long. We just pray. The problem with the blocking of channels is this, that every day the channel remains blocked. It gets more complicated to free it. Uh, as far as international cooperation and help is concerned, what I asked was that the world's biggest salvage company, which ships which have run aground, is a Smith from Netherlands. They are already there on the site. And Dr. Trivedi was telling me, so I'll add that, that we have a hundred, right now 160 metric ton bollard full tug. We don't have a in India, a powerful tug like this. The 160 metric bullet pull tug, along with various other tugs, dredging is being carried out, remove the sand from the bottom, because the vacuums build up, and then it sucks the ship inside and holds on to it. So it's a bit of a complicated process. As I said, every day that passes, ship remains at ground, it gets more. The biggest problem, I think the equipment, resources, knowledge is, up, knowledge is all available very close to Egypt, that is European side, uh, Europe, from especially the Netherlands is very, has an expertise and experience in this field, but there is work. The channel itself is only 200 meter wide and ship is 400 meter wide. 
a lot of maneuverability and space to do the work. So uh, this is what is the constraint right now. I, uh, we would have a good news uh, by in next couple of days before we have a festival of Holi, hopefully, because it can't we can't afford to keep a, like that a ground and a Suez Canal block. Other options like remove some cargo from the ship. The ballast, I believe, has been removed. Reduce, minimize to reduce the sinkage so that the float. But right now, the forward part of the vessel, I saw the picture is stuck in the sand. And that is where the vacuum is created and the vessel is stuck in it. So they are, uh, as I said, it's kind of, a, you know, removing a spoon, spoon by spoon because of the, the lack of space. So it's a, it's a very tedious uh, technical job, painful job. But I believe in next 72 hours or so, we should be able to pull the vessel out. And that's the only solution to this crisis. Uh, good Cape of Good Hope route is there. It exists, we all know. But as I told you, 500 kilometers long vessels, which are already en route, if they have to decide, to, they would hold on, basically, first of all. Nobody is going to go for 15 days of extra steaming time. Uh, as I said, perishable cargo. Well, perishable cargo generally are on high-speed vessels, and they are well-preserved. So that care is taken, they can last out that much be extra sailing. But the cost is phenomenal. The contracts will have to be renegotiated. Charter party, the freight rates, very complex scenario. I think the international community is aware of it. As Mr. Mr. Dr. Devedi said, we really can't do much about it uh, in terms of helping out. So it's salvage the ship or free the canal. Our advisory government has issued, yes, the entire fraternity the shipping companies or trading companies know that there is a route via Cape of not viable. Uh, we'll have to wait. It's kind of every day you wait and watch and see how the situation unfolds really. Absolutely. Even yeah. though uh, certain immediate steps have been announced by the government, but if this uh, blockage continues for a few more days, the ramifications are going to be huge. Dr. Trivedi, in terms of cost that uh, Mr. Singh was uh, mentioning, the, if the freight rates go high, how is it going to impact the supply chain? Well, uh, it's very natural that uh, the uh, supplies, uh, the cargo freight rates go up. Supplies uh, will, will uh, as uh, Rakesh Singh said, uh, it's it's a very complex. You know the uh, the the uh, the the charter of freightment, the contract, and all these things to be renegotiated. Some people might not be willing to pay. They'll say, "No, you hold on. We'll pay uh, extra waiting charge rather than uh, going on that five thousand kilometer rerouting." And suppose he moves on to that rerouting, and in the meantime, the channel opens up, so he can't come back. You know, he has to complete the whole then uh, route, and so it's it's a decision. And I think uh, people are watching very uh, closely uh, how the 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 attempts to uh, to to clear clear up the channel uh, are being uh, undertaken. And uh, I mean, as uh, is very obvious, you you first empty the uh, the boat. You first empty the ship, and uh, then you wait for some high tide to rescue, or you uh, have these big uh, uh, tugs, powerful tugs to straighten the ship. And uh, and because of the shape, as you can understand, if you put a big rock in, uh, in the middle of a uh, channel, the silt starts accumulating around there. So that uh, that's a continuous problem. And... Uh, I can see some of the biggest companies uh, in uh, uh, siltation, desiltation, and uh, dredging, Boscales and others are already operating, but uh, they probably don't have so much elbow space to work with that huge Empire State type of building, uh, the strip lying across the diagonal. I mean, you can't even cross uh, unless you go over the ship. So it's, it's a, I think they must uh, be doing everything but uh, uh, but I think uh, probably uh, looking at uh, what has happened for the last two, three days, nothing seems to be uh, changing. Uh, some really extraordinary effort needs to be put. I mean, maybe they could quickly empty the ship. I don't know how difficult that is because you need cranes and other things uh, nearby to do it. And then you need a place to uh, place the containers. Containers are not... Uh, 
so called waterproof you know they might be put some jeopardy the stuff exactly. inside insurance issues cost issues logistics issues there are hundreds of issues but uh, it's it's really a big crisis really certainly, a big crisis certainly. Mr Singh so we've talked out a short term plan for ourselves but if this crisis prolongs how should we prepare to bear losses in the long run and also do you recall any similar incident in the past that has not just impacted global trade in this way but also unleashed a flood of claims by everyone who are affected by this uh, crisis because the losses for everyone involved are going to be huge first i uh, i was i would i would look at it this crisis from india's trade point of view for i that you have asked sure. uh, one is that it's a it's a mixed bag news for india good and bad both as far as our are concerned we are pretty covered you know it's all middle east so you know, mostly from middle east so we are okay with it what is going to for us is our export that is mostly to european union and to united states in america so trade from the trade side that's a good and bad thing for us uh, india export is going to be badly hit uh, to you know europe and uh, america and all other exports that we do but our oil imports are by and large because from middle east countries so that is this canal has no role to play uh, coming back to uh, technical efforts to salvage float the vessel and free the canal so that as i also mentioned and dr trivedi mentioned the words best come was callus smith they are already on spot with the best of the equipment the diving team i mean you know state of art things they are, they are there with a set as there's no not much space to work and that's why it has to be a slow job meticulous job in a system not a tidal canal so the natural rise of water or fall of water is yeah so that's a good thing also in a way yes. but uh, when you have a tidal uh, uh, water raise then when the water rises you can vessel automatically i i don't recall any major crisis except during the war when the ship blocked really uh, due to the navigation of the vessel i don't recall there were incidents where the vessels have hit uh, in they were quickly recovered and you know, floating <laughs> and the operation is resumed you know the canal is clear and otherwise also this is a mega crisis and mega crisis more so because of the size of the vessels which are transiting uh, 400 meter is really long half kilometer long ship is transiting uh, so uh, it is a challenge uh, for experts who have been doing this job for years Mm-hmm. but i do ho- i hope that uh, in a, in a, as i said three days four days time should mm-hmm. be able to sell the biggest claim as far as claims are concerned those ships which are waiting uh, uh side or inside there are ships waiting inside the canal because the system of transit has become like this that vessels start from south and after a while the vessels also start from north and then they have a parallel channel for certain length of canal it's a simultaneous movement but now because where this vessel is run aground is a single channel so there are lots of vessels inside and there are of course outside this probably is covered under what is called force majeure clause the real claim will come against the shipping line you know swiss canal authorities will impose the claim on the shipping line with the vessel who, who owns this vessel otherwise i think all other claim are claims which probably would force majeure and there would be no losses yes of course everybody will have to be a Absolutely. all would be probably adequately covered with the force major clause in the mm. contracts and because of the mega crisis that both of you have pointed out uh, in history this is one such incident where the narrow suez canal has been blocked in this particular way and it is impacting global trade in a huge way so with that i'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to both my guests once again for joining us on the program and putting things into perspective for us and our viewers pleasure having you on the show That's it from us on this edition of the big picture. Thank you for your time.